Hey, just a quick warning. I accidentally recorded this episode with some bad microphone settings, and it results in my voice distorting in a rather unpleasant way, especially when, you know, stuff gets hectic and loud. So if you're listening on headphones, you might want to turn the volume down a little bit. Otherwise, it can be quite unpleasant to listen to. Secondly, yes, I am bleeping out some of the naughty words in this episode, specifically because I've been told that YouTube's algorithm detects when you're using bad language and it will punish you by not showing your video to as many people in the algorithm. So, say la vie. Hello, killers and calorie bars. My name is TV Sky, and welcome back to the boss designs of Dark Souls. Now, if you remember, last time we beat the Capper Demon, sort of after a fashion. I mean, it killed me multiple, multiple times, and then eventually I lucked into killing the two dogs that he's got running around with him, and then I beat the Capra Demon. Turns out, the place he was hanging out was a complete dead end, and pretty much the only thing useful he had was like a key that I needed to do a thing. So I'm gonna take that key and I'm gonna go apparently downwards because we need to find the bell that's below whatever or something because prophecy and stuff. Oh, hello. Prophecy and sh That's That's what Dark Souls is all about. Okay. Down, down into the depths. Are there some dudes around here? I can't remember. No dudes. This place is dude free. This place, however, <clears throat> it's probably not quite so dude free. In fact, I suspect it's rather dude infested. I'm being, oh, wow, okay. I'm, go I'm gonna take a wild, crazy guess that that dude is not there to sell delicious, delicious meat to me, but rather to perhaps hope to Ah, goddammit, I forgot these torch assholes are... Trouble. Is there like a stair- Oh, there's a stair right there. That I can take to go down to the dude who's inevitably gonna try and kill me. Oh, just- Yeah! <laughs> hey, hi! Hello, hi! How you doing? You are very big! And very large! And very slow, which I'm very happy about. Come, I hate that, like, even if I absolutely hit the goddamn dog, it can just, oh no, I did a dodge. Ow. Stop that. Oh, no! Yeah, definitely that. Okay, so he's not quite as threatening as the Capra Demon, which was kind of the delusion I was laboring under, is that he was going to be equally dangerous. Ember. Yay, Ash. Woo. Oh, hello. That looks like a falling down kind of situation. You, do you guys just, like, hang out down here? Okay. Th turns out this is not anything down here. Okay. Unless this is a thing. Is this a thing? Seems like it should be a thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so sure about this. Thank you. I would have been in suffering there again. Feeling in the line. I start to think. Thank you. Thank you, dearly. I am Luetius. With the grace of Alpha Nord. Well. Cool. Sweet, I guess I can summon him at some point then. Except, of course, I'm never, ever, ever gonna turn myself human because I remember what happened last time. Dark Spirit has invaded. I know what that means. That means, there you are. I see you. <laughs> oh, good. Is he just gonna stand there gesturing at me? Because I tried to stab him and I did no damage. Bye. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, 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 double,
Ah, whoa. Ugh, you. Yeah! Ah! What the What the fuck? Oh! Yeah! No! No, 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 no! 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 You! Hi. Hello. Yeah, your input is, is really appreciated right now, dude. Just, could you please? I was having a nice discussion with my friend, Mr. Asshole over here. Okay. Well. Ah! Son of a god damn it! You. Okay. So, okay. Bad things up. The ceiling slimes are a thing. Okay. I'm, I'm extremely paranoid now. Oh, there you are. I see you. Hello. We're just going to do this real slow. <laughs> nope. I feel like I'm not... <laughs> One hour later. Approximately 10 hours later. Two thousand years later. No more slimes! Oh, okay. So that's, um... Oh, I want that. Oh, this feels so much like a trap. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, there's a bonfire. But it is also... It feels like... Oh, no. Okay. This is that. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, thank God. I'll never get used to those fucking ghosts, man. It's just a secret bonfire behind the master key, I guess. Is that literally the only way you can get in there? That seems unfair to people who don't have the master key. Okay. <laughs> Ah! The f <laughs> What? Okay, you know what? I'm t no, it's can we just No, okay, I, gu I guess I guess Aha. Just Yeah. This it feels a lot like it should be easier to shoot between these things. Okay, I guess. Hi. Hello. Is this some kind of intimidation ritual? The thing is, people keep telling me to stop using the spear and shield. But, like, half the places I go is these f corridors where you can't swing a sword around. Yeah! Ugh! Okay, so that wasn't the slime, I guess. That was... Yeah, f Whoa! Good lord. This is gross, right? Like, this is super gross. Uh... Ah! <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> f you! God! F Ew. 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 Okay... Soul of a nameless soldier, that's nice. Aha, I see. I see. Hmm. Hmm. What's making that noise? Yeah, okay, hi, hello, hi. <laughs> okay. Guess I found what was making the noise. Oh boy. Uh ah!
No, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am, whatever this is, no. No, 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 why is everything so gross? Uh, okay, where the frank am I now? Yeah. What? Oh god, they're just so gross. Nope. They're just so gross. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm tense. I'm so f tense. Okay. Okay. No! Ugh. Ring of the evil eye, huh? The strength of the evil eye does not waver and HP is absorbed from fallen enemies. That sounds good. It also sounds like it could potentially be like super cursed. Like really just super cursed. There we go. Give me your humanity, okay. I hate everything. Thank God they're not difficult to kill. It would be such an insult if they were both like the most hideously ugly things you've ever seen in your life and hard to kill. So I have to assume that like much like we have the the, the moonlight butterfly occupying this, you know, beautiful garden area that, that very much reflects what the butterfly is like and what it is as a, as a, as a creature and as an enemy. Well, one has to assume that this area reflects the nature of the bastard we're gonna have to kill in it. So this is probably gonna be a really gross boss fight. I guess. Hello. Oh my god! Who's you? I looked! You weren't there before! Oh. Uh, are you a bad guy? I mean, this area looks relatively more civilized than, um... Well, if he was a bad guy, he... What the frack do you mean, good day? Literally right there is a waterfall of filth and slime, presumably spewing straight from the hole of hell itself. How are you sitting there so chipper? Jesus Christ. Is there anything? Yay, up. Up is good. Up is good. Oh. Sunlight. Fog door. Oh, this is the boss arena, isn't it? I think this is the boss arena. I think I'm gonna be fighting some. Ah! The sh Oh, you! I remember you! I remember you. Nope. Do you not run out of mana or something? He's dead, right? Nope. Now he's dead. Okay, so it's probably, I mean, it's probably good that I got rid of him now. I guess. Okay, so there's a way down, presumably leading to the fog door, and then you can go fight the boss, but I have no Estus Flasks left. Which means I'm gonna die if I do that. Give me the wisdom of the ages, O text on the ground. Okay, well. Actually, what's behind that door over here? So at this point, I think I know where the boss room is. Danger zone ahead. Yeah. Well, okay. Nothing I need to worry about, clearly. Aha! That's a ladder. 
Ladders leading to... Helpful place. Where I can fire some bonds. Bonfire. Yes, yes. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yes, good. Can I level up? I don't think I can. Oh, I can, actually. Good. Spend some souls before I fight the boss. That's probably for the... Oh, right. It respawns everything. I forgot about that part. Never had to fight the rat. I'm kind of pleased about that, because... God, I would rather not. Okay. Here we go again. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So now, presumably, laser firing head guy is not back. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, that uh, nah, went better than expected. Uh. Oh, cutscene time, is it? Okay. Oh no. Oh wait, that's a crocodile. I can deal with a crocodile. Oh no! Oh, that's not a crocodile. Oh, that's def- <laughs> Oh no! Oh, that's definitely not a crocodile! Oh, that's so much worse than a crocodile. Okay. So that's- Oh, okay. That's- yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, 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 the imagery! Gaping dra- oh yeah, of course it's gaping. That's- that's what you had to call it, gaping. Thank you very much for that, Dark Souls. Okay, so the pattern here seems to be- it slams its stupid f***ing head down on- on me- Ow! And also, just running at- okay! Okay, I guess- I guess you ran at me really hard and then I died. Was what almost happened. Okay. Nope! Uh... Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So, that was, that was a lot of damage from absolutely everything that thing does. The character design, okay then. <laughs> yeah, the character design, huh? I'm, it's gonna be fun to try and describe that one without getting demonetized. Yeah, it's it's a vagina with teeth. It's a vagina dentata. That's that's what that thing is. That's what it's that's what it's meant to evoke. That's that's intentional on behalf of the designers, pretty obviously. So the the tooth vagina is actually a really interesting piece of imagery because it goes back quite a long way. So using it as a horrible thing to be afraid of in the context of Dark Souls makes a good deal of sense. All right, so it's not that hard to dodge it. It's not that agile, but this is nice. It's been a while since we've had a boss where it kind of feels like I can take my time a little bit in figuring out because the, the, there's, a, there's two parts to this character design. First of all, we've got the giant tooth vagina on its head, which is yeah, it's exactly what it looks like. It is very much meant to evoke that kind of imagery, which is, you know, horrifying all on its own for obvious reasons. But then the rest of the body shape is distinctly phallic. There's also elements of chimeraism to this thing in the sense that it has this set of very distinctly human looking arms. Oh, come on! How were you in range to do that? But, like, I mistook it as for, like, a, a, a lizard immediately. Which I thought was interesting. If I just, you know... This is the kind of battle that really shows me the virtue of having a lighter armor set so I can run faster because... <laughs> go away! <laughs> I don't wanna... No... Okay, so you can jump to get closer if I beat you at distance, so presumably at some point... I dodged that! Come on! 
I didn't dodge that. And I'm dead. Okay. Not sure what the timing is on dodging any of this. So there's like, because we have the multiple wings <clears throat> on the thing, we are definitely getting elements of, you know, the Seraph, which is the one of the one of the higher ranks of angels in Abrahamic angelic tradition. It makes sense that the big vagina mouth dragon would incorporate like elements of the profane in the sense of also corrupting divine themes, which is something we've seen before. Like when we were dealing with um, the moon, the the moonlight butterfly, I was also talking about how the creature uh, it invokes elements because of the multiple wings. It harkens towards you know angel myths and angel lore. And as it turns out, the, the Moonlight Butterfly, at least insofar as I could read from, from some of the item descriptions I got out of it, is actually a creature that is created by a being that, to a certain extent, fancies itself a creator god of a sort. Chimera, and or like combinations of multiple animals, combinations of multiple creatures, which is clearly what's going on here with the bat wings and the human arms and the lizard-like body are generally considered, you know, created creatures. Like, they're generally designed by someone or something. It used to be a thing with, like, homunculi, that that was a thing in alchemy, that alchemists would be attempting to create life whole cloth. Um, essentially by combining um, other life forms. Okay, I'm just gonna run around you for a bit. But yeah, it's like it's interesting that it like it combines a lot of sexual imagery. Like it's got the phallic thing going on with the you know, the length and shape of its body. It's got the vagina thing going on with you know it's everything else. Multiple wings reminding us of angels, but then also a lizard, which is interesting. Like if if we stick with the the Christian myth making imagery, then it's interesting that it also incorporates like aspects of the snake into itself. And again, especially with Japanese game developers and Japanese game studios, it's kind of hard to tell to the extent to which they incorporate Christian mythology into their games with a, like a full intention of exploiting Christian theology as a theme or whether it's just like kind of a neat aesthetic because that's certainly what they do with um, with Norse mythology, with my mythology. Like you can find a billion Japanese RPGs where there's like those Valkyries and there's like they talk about Valhalla and like you've got Odin in there and stuff like that, but it's all appropriated without really having any sense of the place where it came from. Like it's, it's not really related to Norse mythology. It's just grabbing a few of the names and place descriptions because they kind of sound cool. Kind of the same way that Western developers tend to do with stuff like, um, well, frankly, most religions that they appropriate for their games. So what else is going on? I mean, we've got the corruption again. You see how the body is bloated in weird places. Like the backside is really sort of swollen and bloated while the midsection is, is almost kind of a little bit emaciated almost like it looks like a creature that doesn't have quite enough food to fit its frame but the bloatedness is something we've seen before with the asylum demon in particular um which which had had this massive bloating uh, like a, a very small upper body as compared to its lower body which was was which, which was uh, completely swollen and bloated and lumpy and kind of gross and disgusting it's, it's the same kind of shorthand for corruption that's going on. okay i guess i just run through rocks they're not, they're not even there. God, you're disturbing. Like, I'm, I've gotten used to looking at it now, but it's still... Oh, that's some disturbing imagery. Okay. There's something insectoid about it as well. Like, not... Ow! God, f*** <clears throat> you. Yes, slam your head down. No, don't do that! Ugh! Slam your head down, you piece of garbage hold head. God damn it. Good. Head down. That's what we like to see. And you just run along now like a good little, yeah, disgusting creature. And again, speaking of phallic imagery, look at its head. Like, talk about a phallic image. Wait, or, oh God, no. Oh God, no. The head is the clit. Oh, f*** me. Oh no. The head is the clit. Why is the head the clit? Why would you do that? From soft, for God's sake. I really hope YouTube will actually show the video I make about this to other people because like, oh, there's so much sexual imagery in here. Stand still and do nothing for a while while I slice at you with my tiny little toothpick. 
Uh oh. Nope. No! I can't tell where he's going when he does that! Uh, well, it's progress. Yeah, there's just, I mean, there's no way to talk about this thing without bringing a hell of a lot of sex into it. It's also interesting that in order to get to it, you have to descend into, well, I mean, what you could, if you wanted to be a little pretentious about it, you could take as a metaphorical womb of a sort. Like, you are descent, like, the, the whole, the imagery of descending deeper and deeper into this moist, wet, you know, soppy area full of fluids, like... Yeah, yeah, I guess <laughs> that that serves the imagery. Oh, God. I should really two-hand my weapon, because, like, what the hell is the shield going to do? <laughs> and let's take a look at the intro sequence one more time. Uh, knowing now that it's not a crocodile when it comes up over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. But it does have a mouth up there. So, like, it, it is a head in the tradition. Like, it does have teeth, at least, up there. So it is sort of a head in a traditional sense. And it just has, like, a big open rib cage. What's interesting is there's much less of the obvious signs of disease that we saw with, like, with the with the demons of the thing. Like, this thing looks much less like it's it's particularly diseased. It just looks like it's a really, really disturbing creature. But yeah, from a game design perspective, the wings really should have tipped me off immediately that this thing is going to be capable of flying, even if it's not going to be, you know... Come on. Ah! Hmm, I should probably do some research on Vagina Dentata before I do the post segment for this thing, because, like, Vagina Dentata is a very specific thing in psychosexuality. Like, there's a lot of Freud in here, and while Freud is not a reliable source on any kind of factual information about human sexuality or psychology, unfortunately, he is an excellent source on many of our myths and preconceptions about those things. Aha! Okay, good. He can't hit me with his tail anymore. Well, probably. He can still hit me with his tail a little bit, but... Come on, hit me with your tail. Do it, do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so cute. Just kidding. There's absolutely nothing cute about anything that's happening here. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> of course he does. Of course it vomits. Of course it does. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? That be a thing it does. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, we might be able to kill it in this round. We might, we might, we might. It's gonna vomit, isn't it? No, it's not. Okay, now we're gonna kill it. Now we're gonna kill it. Oh, good lord, finally. Oh, oh I'm very done. I am very done. <laughs> I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna do any more with you. I want you to be a thing I never have to do again in every sense of the word. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> Blight Town. Oh, Blight Town. I have heard of Blight Town. Uh, I've heard of Blight Town mostly like in terms of oh, this is a terrible place that's gonna crash your frame rate completely. Key to Blight Town from the depths of the Undead Burg, swallowed by the Gaping Dragon. Good lord, that name. As its name suggests, Blight Town is a, great, a place of great pestilence. Even the polluted inhabitants of the depths are aware of its dangers and built this mighty door in hopes that they could remain safely separated. So Blight Town door would be the door by the merchant, I imagine. Ha! Huh. All right. That was the Gaping Dragon. Ugh. Ah. That was the Gaping Dragon, uh, which was a thing. Um, oh yeah, right, 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 right. I got a weapon, didn't I? I got the axe from the thing. Maybe that has some more stuff to say. This axe, one of the rare dragon weapons, is formed by the tail of the Gaping Dragon, a distant, deformed descendant of the Everlasting Dragons. This axe is imbued with a mystical power to be released when held with both hands. So that ties into, because like Dark Souls, the whole world of Dark Souls is very much this broken down echoes of former glory. Like you, you're, 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 you're walking through the ruins of a once great kingdom 
you know, everything's corrupted, everything is destroyed and broken, and everyone's dying, and everyone's turning undead, and so on and so forth. And that ties in very well with the idea of the gaping dragon as like a corrupted descendant of those ancient dragons that were once so proud and noble and yada yada before the Age of Fire, so on and so forth. That ties in very nicely. Ah, uh, over to you, Future Sky, and take it away. So, the gaping dragon, huh? This was one of those boss fights where I actually just had an opportunity to run around and talk about the boss while I was fighting it, or not fighting it as the case may be, which means we can probably have a relatively short post segment this time around. So let's talk a little bit about Vagina Dentata. Now, the myth of a vagina with teeth, <clears throat> and especially the horror story of a vagina with teeth, is something that's been around for pretty much forever, and it crops up in myths and mythology from all over the world. Like, I find examples of, like, uh, of it, it propping up in myths from around South Africa and from Polynesia and from Shintoism over in Japan um, and, indeed, in Western mythology. And it's something that's been explored by, like, multiple psychologists and books have been written about it and sort of trying to place what what is this this imagery of the vagina with teeth and and what does that mean for sexual politics and power politics and and, and all that stuff i'm not sure how much of that applies specifically to the gaping dragon because insofar as i can tell it's not really it's not engaging on a very deep level with any of that kind of sort of lore mythology stuff going on there i think what we've got here is more a case of a creature simply appropriating a suitably horrific type of imagery just to make its character design that much more scary, which is, you know, pretty common. So I don't think it's it's like a deep commentary on any specific sort of sexual politics or gender aspect of character design. It's it's just a, a case of, of a useful type of imagery being available and then being used. That being said, I don't think it's like you can't draw conclusions there. Like, I definitely think there's something to this idea that I brought up in the main video about descending into a womb that's like full of fluids, that's like full of... Of, of, you know, slime and all this stuff. Like, I think there's definitely something to that, but exactly what the commentary is there, I'm not really sure. I've heard fan theories about Dark Souls 2 that Dark Souls 2 is specifically about journeying back into the womb of the mother. Like, from a psychosexual standpoint, that, that, that that's part of the mythology of the series and to a certain extent. How much that applies in Dark Souls 1, though, I'm not so sure. From a character design perspective... Uh, I feel like maybe the gaping dragon, uh, this, besides using the vagina dentata imagery to be horrifying, it draws a little bit more on imagery of something like Gavina's flytrap or the mouth of a, um, there's a specific species of sea turtle, the leatherback sea turtle, which has a absolutely horrifying mouth that looks a lot like what's going on with, um, with the gaping dragon. And I feel like those are probably also massive influences on that particular kind of design because it, it is mimicking, besides mimicking, you know, the horrifying myth, it is mimicking nature. Nature has these things in it, like these, these particular structures exist in nature and they are potent as a thing to draw from. And that like, if, if the Gaping Dragon is supposed to be sort of an evolution, or a devolution, as it were, of the ancient, you know, great grand dragons that used to rule the world, and so on and so forth, it makes sense that they would draw on natural creatures for the imagery there, like, that it shouldn't look too much like a completely implausible horror, that there should be some element of, of this could be a natural creature to it. Which ties into something I was talking about while I was fighting the dragon. I kind of went back and forth a little bit on whether the dragon was supposed to be sort of this demonic corruption of something good and natural, or whether we were supposed to look more like a, a natural creature that could exist in real life, but which was probably just quite unhealthy. And I'm sort of, I'm tending more towards thinking of it as a creature that would have a place in sort of a fic fictional ecology, like that, that there could be a, a, a food chain in which that creature plays a part, like that it could be a, air quotes, natural creature that exists and not like a horrifying monstrosity that was put together by some, you know, malevolent god creature or indeed by an alchemist. I don't think the dragon is necessarily supposed to look um, created. I don't think it's necessarily supposed to look man-made or made by some malevolent intelligence. I think it's supposed to look more or less like still a corruption, still a devolution, in a ter in like a horrifying environment where the thing where healthy things cannot survive, but s but nonetheless, a natural extension of the world of Dark Souls, which is in decline, which is falling apart, which is full of you know sickness. 
and the lumpiness of the body, sort of the, the bloatedness of its upper body and, and uh, you know, behind the hind legs, it kind of reminds me more of, you know, people like people who are victims of malnourishment and scurvy can often get very, very bloated just because of the, the things that this does to their bodies, which is one of the horrifying aspects of of malnutrition. So it looks more like it's a malnourished creature. Like it's 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 probably diseased. It's probably extremely hungry. It's probably emaciated, um, and it's probably you know suffering from terrible. Terrible, terrible malnutrition. Unlike the asylum demon, which was clearly a thing where, like, it was completely bloated and it was lumpy and it had like bone poking out through its skin and stuff like that, which was supposed to look like this, which was supposed to look demonic. Whereas this thing looks less demonic and just more like something that slithered out of the deepest parts of the Mariana's trench, looking for a meal. So I think, in terms of vagina dentata, I think there is definitely thematics of like being consumed by the unleashed power of, of 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 the female sex, which is like an ancient anxiety in in humanity and it, in you know straight men in particular, but just in humanity in general. Like even women can have that particular fear. Um, I think there's definitely elements of that. I think that's used to heighten the horror, but I don't think it's necessarily the main theme of the thing. I think the main theme of the thing is really more a commentary on the world of Dark Souls, on the state of the world, that it's so hard to find food that, you know, the kinds of creatures that evolve here are creatures that are made almost entirely of mouth because they can only think of consumption. They can only think of consuming, which, you know... Think of who you are as the player. You keep killing and killing and killing and killing and consuming literally the souls of the things that you destroy. So is there a kind of parallel mirroring of like this, like this is another version of you, a creature which exists only to consume others for its own benefit? Is there something to that? Maybe that might become clearer as the game goes on, as we find more creatures and learn more about the lore. But I thought it was kind of an interesting parallel that... Like, what you've been doing so far in the game is just killing and killing and killing and killing and killing indiscriminately. You've been killing pretty much everything you come across that doesn't try to trade with you and consuming it for your own power. And it's interesting that there is a creature in the game that takes that sort of same tack on things. But yeah, that's about all I really had to say about the uh, gaping dragon. I hope none of the other bosses are quite as horrifying as this one. Hey, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, there's a like button down below. I encourage you to click on it. There's also subscribe buttons, and you can comment on things to tell me to do more of these videos or do less of them. That's also an option. And if you are so inclined, I do have a Patreon that could benefit from a bit of the support. Like a, a, a dollar a month, very helpful, very good. It's like a dollar a month is worth like a thousand views uh, in terms of in terms of YouTube money, depending on the kinds of ad you sell, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But like, if, if, you, if you want to support me or any other creator that you like, even small amounts of money can make a tremendous amount of difference to people like us who, you know, try, attempt to do this for a living. So if you want to do that, thank you very much. If you can't or if you, if you, if you don't want to, of course, that's completely okay. I'm just happy that you have watched the video so far. If you do not like the video, well, you know, of course, that's that's your right as a person. And uh, fortunately, there's a very convenient dislike button right over there that you should just go and click on right now. It's perfectly safe. It's fine. I promise there's not there's nothing hot. There's no like if you click, it's, nothing's going to happen if you click on it. And then all of a sudden, just a consuming mouth of teeth spring out from your screen and consume your entire hand. That I would never. I mean, I don't have the magical powers to place a curse like that on a piece of web design. That would be terrible. Terrifying and would out me as a sort of wizard from a secret society that stayed hidden for thousands of years But which is aching straining to break into the light of day and take over the world as we were destined to do by our forefathers That's probably def- that's no don't worry about it. Just click the dislike button. It's totally fine Thank you very much for watching <laughs>